Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Hermione and in today's video I'm going to be sharing some DIY projects because that's just what I like to do around here. Today's projects are all room and home decor items because these are the projects I like doing the most and I hope you guys like them too. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to subscribe if you do like these kind of videos and stay tuned for more. So, with all of that being said, let's jump right into the video. First up, I'm going to show you guys how to make a little ring display if you have any jewellery that's lying around that you need to tidy up. It's this little cactus and it's super cute, so let's get into it. For this, I'm taking the lid of an old jam jar to make the base, and then to create the cactus, I'm taking some garden wire and shaping it into a cactus shape. I chose really thick wire so that it was easy to use and mould into the right shape, and I also made two little feet at the bottom to secure it onto the lid. To secure it, you'll need to use some hot glue, so place it down on the lid and glue it into place. And then you'll also want to use a little bit of hot glue down the sides as well, just to make sure it's got a really firm hold. Once that's dry, you're going to need some air dry clay and flatten this out as much as you can with your fingers and then start wrapping it around the wire in a cactus shape. Don't worry if this doesn't look perfect, it is clay and clay is really hard to work with and I'm going to show you guys how to paint it a bit later so that it will cover up any of the flaws. But yeah, push the clay into the wire and just keep moulding it until you have a shape that you're happy with. Oh and also you'll want to make sure that this covers the base as well and covers where you glued the wire down to make it really sturdy. Once you've left it to dry overnight, you should have something that looks a little bit like this, then you can go ahead and paint it. For my first base of paint, I used a faux concrete textured paint just to hide any little flaws in the clay because it is really hard to work with. Then once that was dry, I went ahead and painted it in this light grey and a purple too. And as you can see, it's kind of textured when you get up close to it. This is how it turned out and if you make one of these, I would love to see it. Next up is this DIY woven wall art project and I think I've pioneered the lazy girl's way to weaving so if you want to see it let's jump right in. So for this project you'll need a frame in whatever size you want to make your piece and you'll need some thin wool. Start by tying the wool onto the frame in the top corner and then use a little piece of washi tape to pin this down to make sure it's not going to go anywhere. Then wrap your wool around the frame as I'm doing here. Do about three to four of these and then once you've done that, making sure they're evenly spaced apart. Mine were about a centimetre apart each. Then you can go ahead and add more washi tape to tape them down. If you do this in small sections, it will make sure that none of these pieces of wool start slipping around. Once you've finished, you should have something that looks like this. This is our faux weaving loom, and then I'm going ahead and using some wool roving. This is really cheap from a craft store, and you can pull it apart like this. And then I'm just going ahead and weaving this through. If you've never weaved before, it's really simple. You just take the piece of roving or wool or whatever you're using, and you go over and under each of the threads so you alternate them. When you get to the end, like I've done here, you want to make sure it's all nice and flat and then you can push it up to the top with your fingertips and make sure it's very densely packed in. Then just pull it straight through and start going the opposite direction, but make sure this time you are alternating different threads. So if you went over the last thread on the last row, you want to go under it next time. Here's the process being sped up a little bit so you can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm just using a bunch of different colors and pulling it through. Make the sections of colours as big or as small as you'd like. I'm mixing it up with some rows of two, three, four. And then once you've finished that, go ahead and tuck the edges of your roving into the last line, if that makes sense. Just pull them over and tuck them underneath somehow to make sure they're not sticking out. Then when you get to the end, you can add a wooden dowel between the strings cut the strings and then tie them very tightly to the wooden dowel making sure you double or triple knot them all. When you do this make sure to tie the string from the front to the string from the back and then you can hang up your weaving without any problems. You'll also want to tie all of the strings at the other end, tie the front string to the back and tie them really tightly. And to finish you can add a piece of wool that goes from one end of the dowel to the other so that you can hang up your piece. And this is how mine turned out. You can use wool roving or wool or scraps of t-shirt fabric or whatever you want to create a woven wall art piece. Next up, I'm going to show you guys how I made these wall mounts for these clickable battery powered lights. They're really cheap and they don't require being plugged into the wall. 
To assemble these lights, you'll need these pieces. This will make one light and I'll put all of the information on the screen here so you can see the dimensions of each of these pieces. You'll need the light, a block of wood, some copper pipe and all these copper pipe fixtures. For the lights, I'm using these battery powered clickable LED lights and I got these from Amazon. They're really cheap. They came in a pack of two for eight pounds. And then what I'm doing here is I'm just masking off all the areas that I don't want to paint like the cable and the bulb. And then I took it outside and spray painted it silver because that was the kind of look I wanted to go for. Once it was dry, I took off all of the masking tape. You can skip this step and leave them plain if you would like to, but I just wanted to paint mine. Next up, you'll need some wooden blocks. I'm making two lights, so I have two blocks. I polished mine with some Danish oil to bring out the natural texture of the wood underneath, but this is an optional step. For the copper pieces, you'll need some of these 90 degree angle pieces. You'll need some of these fixtures too, not quite sure what they're called. And you'll also need the copper pipe, which you can very easily cut with a copper pipe cutter. And this is very inexpensive at your local hardware store. I wanted to keep mine all silver, so I did end up spray painting them, but copper would look nice too. And then once you're done, you can then put all your pieces together like so. Start with the one inch piece of pipe, then the angle, then a two inch piece of pipe, then another angled one, and then the four inch piece of pipe. Then you can slot them all together. You can use a little bit of super glue or something like that if you would like to keep them firmly in place. And once you've slotted them all together, they should look something like this. I'm using a hot glue gun to attach this to the wood, but actually I would recommend super glue because the hot glue kind of didn't stick very well to the copper pipe. So I had to use a lot of it to get it to stay in place. So definitely I would recommend using super glue and just letting it dry. Then once it was dry, I added these two fixtures. You can nail them in if you want the extra security, but I just glued them. They were kind of just there for, for show, nothing really structural about them. <laughs> Then when they're dry, you can go ahead and mount them on your wall. I used command strips for mine because they were so light. These things are amazing. I can't believe how light they are. And you can just move them anywhere around your room. And they're really easy just to click to turn them on and off. And here's a super easy project. I want to show you guys how to make your own drawer pull. If you want to update the pulls on your dresser drawers, they're very simple and I love using these in projects, but they can get quite expensive. So here's how I made one. I started by using the piece in a very cheap drawer pull I already had, but you can actually use a very long screw and some nuts and bolts. So you don't actually have to buy a new one if you want to make this. This is just what I had hanging around. So this is the piece that I had. And then I'm also using a silicone tray, which is actually full of soap, I think, and it's gem shaped. I already punctured the hole, but I'm just gonna show you how. I used a pin and I pinned that in and made a big hole in the bottom of one of the trays and then push that screw really firmly in, making sure there was no space around it so nothing could leak out. Then once that was in place, I used some hot glue and filled this up really slowly and carefully. I did this in very small layers and when there was an air bubble, I used the pin just to get rid of it. So once the first layer had dried, I went in again and I probably ended up doing about five or six layers of glue. This way it didn't melt the mold. And then once I was finished and it dried, I pulled it out. And then you could leave it like this if you want, or you can go ahead and paint it. Just mask off any of the metal areas and use some spray paint to paint it. And then all you have to do is take off any handles on your old wardrobe or dresser drawers and screw in your new handle. This is what mine looked like. I'll be honest, I ran out of glue so I could only make one but it was just about showing you guys how to make one if you wanted to make one for yourself. That is everything I have to share with you guys in today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it and if you did like it don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already and stay informed of all of my future videos. And as always I hope you guys have a great week and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!